ideals like peace, freedom, and justice, they get packed up, but we cannot go home. Well, I'm not going home. I'm going to get on my boat, and I'm going up river, and I'm going to kick that son of a bitch bison's ass so hard that the next bison wannabe is going to feel it. Now, who wants to go home, and who wants to go with me? Welcome to the Rated G for Gamers podcast, episode 299. Before we start the show, we want to thank all of our wonderful fans who have supported us. And if you want to show support for the Rated G network, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Rated G for Gamers. You can also find us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook at Rated G for Gamers. And finally, please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. We appreciate all the love. I'm your host, Dave Rotino, and this is my co-host, Dan, the podcaster formerly known as Classic Robinson. What's going on, man? It's the last episode of the year, Dan. This is it. Episode 299. Big episode. And yeah, if you're wondering why this is the last episode of the year, because there is one more week uh, when you're hearing this episode, we are uh, we are taking a small hiatus. We're going to come back strong in the new year with episode 300, and it's going to be great. Brand new year, lots of big things planned. Uh, very excited. So, and, oh, Just to piggyback that, also, we're taking a break from Saturday Morning Retro. I know mm-hmm. we said there would be an episode this month, but we're going to hold it for January because we have something special we're planning. Oh, we just need a little bit so more special. time. So special. Just a little bit very, more time. So, yes. Very excited. Yeah, so look for that in the new year. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, well, Dave, we have an awesome show, mm-hmm. right, uh, for the last episode in 2021. We're going to mm-hmm. take a look mm-hmm. back at 2021 and do a sort of like a retrospective mm-hmm. and go through some of the, the top stories in 2021. And then we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to go into the top t- with the 2021 Game of the Year nominees, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The top 10 games. You pick five, I'll pick five. And then we'll announce the winner, the Game of the Year. And episode 300. I love it. I love it. So so let me ask you real quick, just, just kind of off the cuff. 2021 or 2020, best year? Gaming, 2021. Yeah. Hands down. It was better than I was, I was I was going for a more overall thing, but I guess we are a gaming podcast, so uh, I would agree. 2020 was kind of a wreck. Uh, there was a lot of good stuff that came out, and people made we the best. We had a lot of delays. We had mm-hmm. a lot of delays in 2020. Right. And we had a lot of delays in 2021, too. That's mm-hmm. going to go out into 2022. And I think I talked about this a few months ago where we've had so many delays and new game announcements that are in 2022. 2022 could be, arguably, if everything comes out and not get, not get delayed out of 2022, could be one of the best gaming years. Yeah. Of Breath of the Wild's not coming out next year. I don't think it's it coming. It's coming. Come on, man. I mean, Come it's on. coming. I don't think it's coming next year. It's coming. I don't next know. Year. Everybody's everybody's it's saying coming. real late 2022 or most likely 2023. I say it's 2022, it which is be crazy because if it comes out 2023, that'll be a six year difference between Breath of the Wild and Breath of the Wild Two. Well, but it's going to be good. It's going to be a good game. Going to be good. Mm-hmm. I still think. I still think. I don't know about Breath of the Wild Two, right? Like, I still think they're going to change the name. Oh, uh, yeah, because they've never. With the exception of Zelda, Zelda Two, they've never sequentially I would, named. I would, a I would sequel. love it if it. I would love it if it's Zelda Breath of the Wild Two, right? Like that would be great because it would uh, be the first time they did something like that in thirty years. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think they're. I, I I think they'll have a new creative title. Okay, but right, uh, we'll what, what that what what that would be, I I I can't say. I can't say. All right, to Dave. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
let's let's start the retrospective of 2021. Mm-hmm. All right, 20. We had we had a, we had some ups and downs in 2021. I I thought for news, to be honest, it was kind of I was kind of down on just like the top news of of 2021. As in as stuff. in negative news stories. Negative news stories, mm-hmm. right? Like, I mean, let's. I mean, I. Let's just jump into it. Like we I started off with like Activision Blizzard controversy, right? Yeah. Like all of that yep. stuff. And and to piggyback that, Activision Blizzard controversy and slash Ubisoft had some also the same. Yep. Had some rumblings of the same thing, right? Yep. 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 Which is which is terrible. And and this this comes off the heels of the stuff in 2020. If you remember the whole controversy with. Um, uh, maybe it was like StarCraft. Somebody was like pro Hong Kong after and in like a in like a victory speech. And oh yeah, that's right. That's Activision right. Blizzard kind of did the wrong thing and kind of cowed out, in my opinion. Like you know, I mean, you you, you can kind of say, well, they were just trying to be, you know, neutral in the situation and not necessarily. But it's a terrible. To be, to, to terrible be fair, to be, to be to be to be fair, to be fair, and I'm not really commenting on, on exactly what's going on in, mm-hmm. in China. Mm-hmm. But uh, there was the same controversy, not just in games, but like in, 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 in the NBA, right? Oh, like sure. It was a, a GM, the former GM of the Rockets. He's now the GM yep. of the 76ers. Said yep. the same thing about China. Yep. yep. Right? And basketball is big in China. Like, oh, huge. it's huge. And they want to stay neutral, right? They don't want to get involved in, in, the, in, in any type of political warfare with China because they make a lot of them. <clears throat> Billions in China, right? Sure. And as soon as that happened, sure. they pulled basketball off for of TV, off for of the television stations, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. cost the NBA and the NBA teams, you know, millions if not billions of dollars. So yeah. it wasn't just a gaming thing; it's, it's sure. all around. Well, it it so. happened in uh, happened in the Marvel, well, not the Marvel universe, but the the Fast and the Furious universe, right? When John Cena came on, and oh yeah, that's he, right. He referred to Hong Kong as like. A sovereign country or something like that. He he referred to Hong Kong incorrectly, and it was by all means it was completely innocuous. Is like you know my heart goes out to the the you know the people of Hong Kong or whatever it is. But it's like Hong Kong's supposed to be its own thing, but it's really not. It's really ruled by Ch- there's so much, and China blew up, and uh, John Cena came back and apologized in Mandarin. In in arguably very good Mandarin, like he learned the language. So kudos to him for kind of trying to, you know, like uh, terrible I'm sure he got a call. Whatnot, but I, I'm sure he got a, I'm sure he got a call from Vince McMahon. <laughs> oh, I mean, he got a call from a ton of people, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. But, but back to the Activision. Back to the Activision Blizzard controversy. I mean, what, what, what do you what you know? Just looking back, what do you what are mm-hmm. some of your thoughts on that? I mean, the CEO. The president and CEO, I think he's the president as well. President and CEO, it's still Bobby, there. Yeah. Bobby Kotick, he's yeah. not gone. Now, yeah. now he did make statements that uh, that he would leave under certain conditions, right? Uh, which I don't think those have necessarily been met yet. Um, so he's not going to take any action just yet. Uh, they have gotten rid of a lot of the higher ups at the company, so they are like trying to make change. So the wheels are in motion. The employees have been uh, a couple of uh, uh, strikes, walkouts, or whatever it is. So they're they're kind of forming a makeshift union. Uh, hopefully that gets codified into like an actual union, because uh, I don't think programmers have any official union. So you know they're there kind of no, trying there to make is that. no union. No, yeah. and and no. remember the the law firm that Activision Blizzard hired oh. uh, to combat some of the lawsuits is a law firm that's known for breaking up union talk or, yep. or something along those lines. Right? Yep. So. Yep. Which, which, I get from a company standpoint, you don't want, you know, because they don't like unions for a number of reasons and all that. But it's a real bad look on already the amount of bad looks that you had at the end of 2020 and now throughout 2021 to say to say, hey. We have all this bad stuff going on. We messed up really bad. And also, we're going to prevent you from unionizing because, right? Like, there's no no real way to spin it. Uh, now, they are, they are doing stuff internally, trying to make things better. So, you know, great. You know, I'm not going to give Bobby a pat on the back, but at least things are getting better, 
which is great for the uh, employees, you know. And, uh, you know, most of it's been corroborated as true. Uh, enough of enough of it has been corroborated to where the yeah, Activision Blizzard's in the doghouse. They're the new EA, in my opinion. You know, EA was just a bad place to work, right? It was just they work you long hours. You don't get a lot of respect for what you do. They're, you know, you're putting out the same stuff year after year. But they didn't have, like... They didn't have all these like assault accusations and kind of sexual misconduct and all that stuff in the workplace. Like it was just rough to work there, I think, was was like kind of what it was. So uh, we will definitely be following the story into 2022 because we know there's going to be more stuff shaken out of it. I suspect Bobby is going to step down. Uh, that that man will be fine, uh, but he's kind of holding on for whatever. He reason. definitely has a golden parachute. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, he's a CEO of a huge billion dollar company. Mm-hmm. He, they'll probably pay him a hundred million dollars to step away or something. Oh, he's lines, got right? two golden so, parachutes. He's got one for him and then one for his like massive amount of money that he's going to get with it, <laughs> which is going to be perfectly fine. Yeah. Ugh. So don't cry. Don't cry for him if he steps down. No. Um, A story that was technically our sort of biggest story metric wise if you check like our, our youtube channel and mm-hmm. stuff like that and and uh just download numbers like this was this story caught me off guard because this this everybody this was our highest rated story mm-hmm. and it was all about accusation of a foul play when it comes to sort of the graded sealed games mm-hmm. with wada mm-hmm. right specifically like, wada is, not a vga sp- vga is okay yes yeah. <laughs> specifically wada mm-hmm Wada I mean, and Heritage Auction House, right? And those Heritage two, Auction House. Yeah. Those two companies in cahoots, in, super cahoots. in cahoots with each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, I, I'm not going to lie, this was a story I did want to talk about, but I didn't think it would get so much traction on our channel. It's it's huge, it man. Did. Like, it, 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 affects every, it affects every collector, point blank. And it also affects gamers, too, as well. So, ba- so, basic, so, basically I could take, so basically, I could take my Barbie's Playhouse, right? to wada and it's a hundred million dollars right there automatically right i mean sure sure okay Okay. the um you know you know this was this was uh you know if anybody watches the listens to the cu podcast which is great completely unnecessary podcast with pat and ian they were beating the drum for the longest and then it really broke open when this youtuber carl jobst who does a lot of like in-depth gaming stuff uh it's usually more about like i don't know speed running or you know, whatever kind of phenomenon in the game industry, but he dug deep into this, did a video exposing WADA and Heritage and all the links and everything and all the nefarious stuff, and recently did a follow-up video to kind of tie it all together and corroborate a bunch of that stuff. Uh, It's bad news. It's bad news. Uh, The silver lining to this story, which I think there is at least one, is they finally put out population reports for the graded games. So you can go on their website, you can search for stuff, and you can figure out how many copies of uh, Mr. Driller for the PlayStation 1 are slabbed and graded, and what their numbers are, and I believe, well, what their uh, uh, rating is, and what they sold for. So you can find out that information, finally. I don't think they have everything on there, but they are putting that together. There was a lot of stuff on there. So all like the big games, the Zeldas, the Marios, and all that stuff, the Barbies, Dream Houses, that's going to be on there. You can go on there and see what they've all sold for and whatnot. So you have an idea of what, what the where where kind of the market is at, what these what these prices are for this stuff. Um, so that's that's at least that's that's something good. As long as my Barbie's dream house is worth like ten million dollars, I don't oh, care. Ten, oh, good. it's gone up! Oh my god, gone up, just a short up. amount of time. You see how this industry up. works? It's crazy. It's gone up. Uh, oh man! Uh. All right. So another big story that happened. <laughs> Uh, in the beginning of the year, actually, mm-hmm. was Google Stadia shuts down its internal game studio, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I'll be honest, we haven't talked about Google Stadia since to be like since the beginning of the year. We haven't talked about Google Stadia. I think the running joke is every time we talk about games that are coming out, you know, notable games that are coming out next month, it's it's coming. It's even coming to the switch, but it's not coming to Stadia. Yep. So is Stadia yep. dead at this point? Like we haven't talked about Stadia in like ten months at all. Uh, you know, I thought it was going to stick it out, and it technically still has. 
I thought it was going to eventually do well. I was I was giving it the benefit of the doubt because Google has a lot of money and they they seem pretty confident that this would. What do about well. that Google Glass? What about that Google? Glass? Uh, well, yeah, I know, I know. They shut that down too. Yeah, Google. Yeah. Google. Google, uh, Google uh, Wave and uh, Google Buzz. That's and what they do. They shut Google things Plus down. Google Plus and, yeah, everything under the sun. The Google Reader. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. You're right. They do. Apple, they... Apple, you, can, you can fault Apple for a lot of things, but they mm-hmm. don't give up on things as easily as Google. At they least, are, they. yeah, yeah. They make a very right? concerted it's... effort to say this is what we're doing going forward. Because because yeah. there are rumors there are rumors that that Apple's getting into cars. There's rumors that there's an Apple Glass right or VR mm-hmm. headset, mm-hmm. Um, and they're gonna push that to high heaven. I mean, their little speaker, their their uh, Alexa, right? Like their mm-hmm. little speaker Alexa type of home audio thing. They still sell that. They're still pushing that, even though yep. it's not as good as the Amazon version, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. they're still pushing it. So sure, sure. I was not. I was all in on Stadia when they were testing it, but when they actually put out the product, then I said, mm, they're going to sell the technology off. I guarantee you. Oh, sell yeah, it someone, off. Will, someone will pick it up, yeah. Someone will pick it up. I mean, Microsoft yeah, is the is the gold standard, I think, with their xCloud. I think they've got the best tech out there right now. Uh, Sony should just, like Sony should just Sony pick should that just, up. Yeah, uh, right. Pick it up, yeah. right? Or Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Nintendo should pick it up. That would be great, right? Nintendo's not going to do that. No. Nintendo's not going to do that. We know <laughs> Sony, that. Sony would though. Sony would. Sony would totally snatch that up. Uh, yeah, what? yeah. Should I'm actually glad we're not. I'm. Um, well, sorry. Um, no, you uh, glad? Well, what are you? What are you happy about? You I'm, glad? I'm glad. What, what I'm glad that. Well, I'm glad. Okay, we are talking about it now, technically, but I'm glad it's not in the news anymore. There's nothing to report, right? The only thing we can say is. Okay, this game is not coming to Stadia. <laughs> Cuz previously it would always be okay, and this game is coming to Stadia, and this game is coming to Stadia. There's nothing new coming to Stadia. Technology's still not great. Sad cuz Google's got the money. I figured if anybody could do it who's not Microsoft, Sony or Nintendo, Google would be the one to do it. And uh yeah. Yeah, not so much. Okay. I mean, Amazon is hanging in there by a thread too. So basically, you're happy know. Stadia is Stadia is uh, essentially dead. Well, I mean, it's it's a dying horse, right? You got to put it out of its misery. If yeah. if I thought it was a good product that was underrated, then I would my tune would be different. Uh, I do I do think it's is un- not as as underrated ba- as the original Xbox. Yeah, I I, I, well, I do think it's not as bad as people say, but it's just not getting better. So it's yeah, I'm 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 definitely good. You- you you know you're a dying <laughs> horse when when Amazon Luna is getting more hype than than, oh your, than your product, right? Yeah. Like I mean, it, it sponsored the Game Awards. That's all we yeah. heard about the Game Awards was Amazon Luna, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'll be honest, I have no idea what games are on Luna at all. <laughs> I know Sonic is on there. I the remember Crucible's that coming, from last year, and Crucible's coming. I, I have I no idea what, what games. I have no idea what games are on are on Amazon Luna. I just know Amazon Luna still exists. Yeah, that's so, right. Uh, another top story: we got a new, we got a new Switch Q, right? We got the Switch OLED. It, it's that's not right. quite the Switch Pro, mm-hmm. but the Switch OLED actually was announced and released this year. And I got one, you got one. We both love it. It's better screen, right? Oh. They did the opposite of what the what Sony did with the Vita when they when they released the Vita OLED right. screen and then released a cheaper model. Right, where the Switch did the cheaper model and then, you know, did the more expensive premium model later on in its life mm-hmm. cycle. I love my Switch Pro. I mean, well, my OLED Switch. It's hard not to say the Switch Pro, right? Because that's what it so should have been better. called. That's what but, it But, well, I mean, it, it should have been called that and had extra RAM and had a better processor and had the OLED screen. But, uh... Mm. So, we got a new Switch model, so that mm-hmm. was great. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty happy with uh, it, right? Like, like I'm. I am. I'm. I'm pretty. It is my main switch. I'm not gonna lie. Same. It's my main switch. Same. Do you use it in dock mode at all or no? I do. I use. Okay. I mean, it's it's my main switch. Okay. To be honest, and I use. I do use it in dock mm-hmm. mode. Um, and we got a switch competitor too, right? Announced at least because it was delayed. The actual release was delayed until 2022, and that is Valve's Steam Deck, right? Mm-hmm. Little handheld gaming pc i am semi-impressed i 
You're impressed. Would even, You're impressed. I'm, I'm semi-impressed. I, and mm-hmm. I would even think about even buying it myself. Oh, not gonna lie. I, I think you're going to get one. You it's think really I'm good. I don't know. From, from all the reports, it's really good. Everyone's saying it's it's great. Uh, the performance on it is really good with all like modern games. Um, you know, there was people playing kind of Doom on there and Tomb Raider and whatever else in, in like the kind of hands on demos that they had. And they're like, this is this is great. It feels really good. Um, and it's, you know, it's a Linux based system, which is which is which is a great, you know, you can download your whole Steam library onto it. Like, hey, I'm okay. excited. I'm excited. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, my money's tied up into other things, you know, life, mm-hmm. life things that of I course. have to do in 2022. But if I can make room to buy it and it's available, because that's another <clears> issue, right? Availability, well, yeah. I will try to, I will try to buy it. Mm-hmm. But something I did invest in that is out right now that you could do, that you could buy. And I think you should upgrade, Dave, because it's not as bad as people think. And it is the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack, where you oh. can play N64 and Genesis games. And they just announced more Genesis games that it will be on the platform. Five new games, I think. Five new games. Yes. Yeah, yes. no. No. When your Come glowing on. review consists of it's not as bad as people think, yeah, I'm out. I'm out, Dan. My only I'm my only then. gripe, my only gripe, I'm not going to lie, my only gripe That's what they is... say about fast food shades. It's not as bad as you think. Come on. It's not. No, that burger, the burger's it? not as bad as you think. It's actually, you know, What's it's it? pretty decent. Listen, the Italian chicken sandwich <laughs> at Burger King is not as bad as you may think. I it's know. not as bad. Yeah. It's it's pretty good. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically processed processed chicken patty, fried mm-hmm. chicken patty with mozzarella cheese and mozzarella. And crumbs, yeah. And, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh-huh. It's not as bad as you think. Yeah. But my only gripe is there's no rewind yeah. feature for the N64 games. I mean, uh, come on. That's Nintendo. it. That's come your on. only gripe. No, come on. Oh. that's my only gripe. No, no, no. That's not my only not gripe. the bad frame rate. Not the uh, not the not the poor emulation for all the N64. I games. I don't care about any of that. I you just do. want the rewind feature. You do. I just want the rewind feature. Oh my That's God. all I want. That's all I want. Ugh. I want See, to be if able you had, if, I, if, if you had a PC, Dan, you could get a very competent, a better N64 emulator that would have all of those features. They'd have save well, states cool. and rewind well, cool. features. Well, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm a console gamer, so I don't have to worry about any of that. Oh I don't have God. to worry about. I yeah. Worry well, about you don't have any rewind feature. Well, well, that's my uh, gripe. That's my gamer right. grief. With, All right. That's my gamer grief with the N64 Fair expansion enough. pack. Fair enough. Okay, okay. So uh, I guess the silver lining to this story is they're adding more content, which is good. I don't know if they're going to fix the emulation anytime they're gonna, soon. They're going to run out. So. They're going to run out. They're going to run out quickly because the N64 didn't have that many first party games. No, begin. no, that's actually that's actually very so, true. If it wasn't so, made by Nintendo, it was made by Rare and. Most of those games, they're going to have to negotiate IP with Rare yeah, to make that happen. I don't know. I, I still don't know why they just didn't buy Rare all, uh, flat out back in the early 2000s. Like, why? why I don't know why they're. Yeah, they, they were such a cash cow for them. They they propped up yeah. the N64 alongside have the Nintendo some, stuff. I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, I know if you actually look at the people who worked at rare at that time mm-hmm. have gone on to work at other studios to work on Nintendo games like mm-hmm. rare now. Is not the rare of yesteryear, yesteryear. right? No. Yeah, the golden age. Yeah. So, so why not just buy them? Uh, imagine all the games we would have right now for mm-hmm. the GameCube and you know the Wii, the Wii, the Wii U, the Switch. If they would have just bought Ray and it would have been an in-house studio, right? Right. Make no sense. Oh, right. that 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 actually reminds me on a quick little side note of hindsight being twenty twenty, but apparently Rockstar. Dan uh, Dan Hauser and his brother went and pitched to Microsoft before their console came out. They said, hey, we have this property which we think would be great for the Xbox. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And that was a little game called Grand Theft Auto 3. But Microsoft looked at looked at them and I think they I think they actually pitched two games. One of those was an Austin Powers game, which never came out. And the other one was Grand Theft Auto 3 that they were going to have some exclusivity with the console and it could have been a launch title or at least right around launch. And to have a game of that caliber alongside Halo, I would then say most underrated console of all time because my God, 
that would have been a powerhouse one two punch. But apparently the execs at Microsoft, I think I think Gates was still there or whatever. The execs are like, Yeah, we don't know about this. This is definitely an untested property. And and granted it was just the overhead shooter uh GTA one and two. They didn't see it translating to three D. They didn't get it. They're like, nah, we're gonna pass. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. That, 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 that looks like a huge misstep. Yeah, by, that by is just, it's a bad. I mean, it, it granted it eventually came to Xbox, I think, in 2003, maybe or 2002, late 2002. Yeah. So they eventually got it. But man, I mean, that that sold PS2s for a long time. I, I mean, what would have happened if like Grand Theft Auto 3 would have been exclusive for at least a year? Right. On the Xbox. That right? would have gotten a lot of people to say, hey, wait a minute. This right? big, it's, this huge controller is not that bad, right? <laughs> Well, it's yeah, right. It's like you manage with the Duke. I mean, we get to we get to ride get, cars off of the uh, over the uh, Staten Island Bridge, right into yeah, uh, into yeah. the ocean. This is this is freaking great. <laughs> so, so also in 2021, we got our last Smash Brothers Ultimate DLC character. That's right. All right, That's Sora right. from Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. I was a little disappointed. So I was you wanted that Goku. Goku. You wanted that. I wanted Goku. Goku. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, I wanted that Goku versus Ryu. I'm sorry. Every I think everybody still, did. I'm still disappointed in Sora. Mm-hmm. Sora to me is an okay character, to be honest. Oh. I mean, we we could have oh, swapped guy. out Sora with one this of guy. the one of the Fire Emblem characters. With no, Swords. no, yes. no, yes. I'm no. sorry. He's yes. iconic. I, I'm still Sora's I'm still iconic. I'm still I'm still disappointed. Oh, uh, whatever. Fans were fans. That was the number two right behind Goku. Right. One was yeah. Goku. Well, you know what? You two know what? You know what? And whenever you know what? any you any any always any, go any for time number people one. voted. What's you that? should always go for number one. You should always uh, go for number one. He is not originally a video game character. That doesn't based matter. Based off an anime. He's, based he's, off based, an anime. He, he, he's played on several you I'm know, aware. Nintendo consoles. I'm aware. I'm aware. Yeah. I would have I loved Goku too. Don't get me wrong. But I'm, I'm happy with Sora. I'm okay with that. And the last of our big stories of 2021. Mm-hmm. This is our huge story that mm-hmm. everybody in the industry was talking about because it changed everything mm-hmm. everything it changed everything world it was a game changer the, the world the you no, know the universe will never be the same because mm-hmm. they just they just found you know there may be evidence of water on mars mm-hmm. but that doesn't change the universe this does pales in comparison to this soldier boy claimed he bought Atari and he was a new owner of Atari. Tell him, Dan. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him who the new owner of Atari is. Which 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 what turned out not even to be true at all. No, <laughs> he bought he bought stock in the company or the NF or or the, the crypto Atari stuff or whatever. He was invested in NFT. It. Yeah. NFTs. He ain't he ain't no, he's not he's no he's no CEO. I'm sorry, soldier boy. All right. You had that one hit song and that's it. I don't know why you're in the gaming news still. This is this is freaking crazy. I mean, this is this is from what last year, the year before, the year before this that. Early. No, no, this is early. This is early. Well, well, the story, this story itself is from earlier this, this year. This one, but yeah. He, but he had he had the knockoff handheld console. Well, the not no, he had the knockoff uh, home console, which played everything, quote unquote, looked like an Xbox beta machine. Right, had a bunch of illegal ROMs on there that were preloaded, and a that bunch Nintendo of Nintendo shut emulators. down. That right? Nintendo shut down. Yeah, and then he and then he puts out the handheld version of it, right? The the Soldier Boy handheld console, whatever it's called, and it was just it was just a rebranded bullshit thing from China, right? This weird six button controller with poor emulation. Oh, and terrible. And he said he bought, and then he said he bought a top. And then he bought Atari. I mean, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, he claimed to buy Atari, which was false. Right. Not true at all. Right. Right. So, I thought that was the biggest story in 2021. <laughs> the game changer. The change. Certainly, the certainly the funniest story of 2021. Let me tell you. Jesus. I could so, say that I bought Atari. Come on. Now. If he could do it, I can do it. <laughs> Makes some Come on, big we changes. can both do it. Yeah. Rated That's G. That's right. Rated That's G, right. baby. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh. On that note, why don't we take a break? When mm-hmm. we come back. We're going to get into our 2021 Game of the Year nominees. And 
And we're back. All right, Dave. Let's get into our 2021 Game of the Year nominees. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. actually my favorite part of the show every year. At the end of the year, you pick five games. I pick five games. And then the first show of the new year, we pick a game of the year winner. Mm -hmm. So uh, why don't we just alternate, right? We'll go back okay. and forth. Okay. What are picks? Um, you know, I'll let you go first. Okay. What is your first nominee for game of the year of 2021? My, uh, my first pick for game of the year is, uh, Resident Evil Village. All right. Mm. Can y'all see that? V I I I Resident Evil Village. Uh, right. Multi-platform game. Uh, it's part eight in the series. Now, if you look at the title, you'll see that the V, the I, and the two stems of the L are lit up in the 8. They are continuing the trend like they did in 7, which I think is awesome. And uh, yeah, continues the story from part 7, where Ethan and his wife uh, go off, well, Ethan goes to find his wife off in, uh, down in the Louisiana Bayou, and uh, this one puts him in uh, the middle of Eastern Europe, where he uh, ends up coming across this uh, crazy castle and meets the lady of the house, who is uh, is pretty awesome. Uh, she won the lady who did the, uh, the lady, the lady who did the, uh, the, uh, the, voice. the voice of Lady Dimitrescu won for best, uh, voice actress at the game awards, which was awesome. Or best voice period. I think, I don't think they split it up male, female. She's but, uh, really, she's really tall in real life too. Oh yeah. Yeah. She definitely, she definitely looks the part if, if she were to dress up as Lady Dimitrescu, which is awesome. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, so, she's definitely. Uh, well, listen, I, I like Resident Evil 8, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, I played the demo, and I played the demo, and I finished the demo, right? Mm -hmm. I got to the castle, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 a, it's a definitely, uh, they sort of sidetrack, because Resident Evil is mostly about zombies, right? Typically, Historic, yeah, the, the, the right? T-Virus or whatever virus from the Umbrella Corporation, yeah. Yeah, and, and this game was more about werewolves, which... I haven't beaten the game, so I don't know what the explanation is, but it's still a little bit weird in my view that we have, you know, moving from zombies to werewolves, mm -hmm. but interesting. It, interesting uh, it all, it all ties in. It all ties mm -hmm. in together. Yeah. The umbrella is, uh, is a uh, part of the story in a way, and I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that, but, um, definitely yeah. more actually than seven, right? I think seven was a return to four. And they, like the and they did one. that and. They, and they did that purposely because they said some of the complaints about about seven was it was a little bit too more it was a little bit more too you know survivor horror horror right yep. like it was you know a, no not a lot not as much action as people wanted it to be sure yeah right yeah and they, and I think, they certainly I, gave that to you yeah and I think Resident Evil as a whole sort of skirts that line mm -hmm. right like the original games were more survival horror. We, you know, four, you know, just I think universally is like the, thought of as the best Resident Evil game of all time because sure. it, it gives you that survival horror and it gives you that action, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where I like Resident Evil 6 because it's more action -y than anything. You know? six, is, <laughs> 6 is like a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie or a Stallone yeah, movie. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a little, what, it's a little too far for me. But that's what I want, right? I and know. Five, yeah, yeah. And I like five too, but sure. but I want more. So you're gonna you're gonna end that. up getting that no matter what the you know they're gonna they're gonna always shift and go from one end to the other and then back again, uh, which which I think is kind of awesome, right? Because eventually you'll get the game that you want, uh, even with all the little side stories and spinoffs and all that. So uh, well, eight is good. It also has the mercenary mode in there, which is like like a, a time battle score score attack action type thing. And you just have to go and beat it in a certain amount of time and keep your uh, keep your combo meter up, which I which I think is awesome. So well, they they did say that um, Resident Evil Nine mm -hmm. complete the tr complete the new trilogy of the Resident yep. Evil game. Yep, right? yep. So, uh, which will complete maybe the first person view, right? Because it's always been third person in all other games where this is mm -hmm. you know sort of a, sort of you know the departure from that. Yeah. So, uh, well, I know what, I didn't beat the game, but I know what happens at the end. So it'd be interesting to see what Resident Evil Nine how that starts. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to do something different. I'm going to pick Guilty Gear Strive. And that's a game Ooh. that you put me on. You that's put right. me on to this. That's you right. Did. You did. And I bought it. And it was, I think, was one of the best fighting games of the year, if not the best fighting game. Oh, hands down I, the best. Yeah. I love this game. Mm-hmm. Like, the just from the art style, right? I mean, it, it really, I, just like, I'm going to say, like, uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Mm-hmm. Sort of, you know, I had, I was, the art style was sort of mm-hmm. like, it was an anime cartoon that I can control, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I love that. Like this Made by awesome. the, made by the same studio, I think, Arc System Works. I think it was the same studio. I'm not sure. I can't. I'm pretty uh, sure. I don't have yeah. the game in front of me. But uh, this is a game, I want to say, like, I don't really care about the story. I don't know anything about the story or any of the Guilty Gear games. So, and you know, my love, I love story. But Well, I they have, the they games. have a whole, um, they, they do. have a whole they have a whole thing where you can see how every character relates to each other, which I think is really cool because there's a lot of weird twisted relationships in there. I will. I, w- I would say this though. The one thing that you had a gripe on that mm-hmm. I think made me like this game more than other games, other guilty gear games that they pared down the character. So you didn't have 30 different characters that you could play as. Yeah. Right? They like only you- had 16. Or fifteen or sixteen or whatever yeah, it's it is. Sixteen to where to where you know sometimes when you have a smorgasbord of, of of characters, right? You're like you're overwhelmed. You don't know which one to pick. Where this yeah. one, I felt a little bit more like all right, like I like these like four or five characters that mm-hmm. I'm always gonna pick and sort of perfect their move set, their move set, right? Right. Considering it's your first entry into the Guilty <laughs> Gear universe, I can I can see that. Second. Second. Oh, your second. second. Oh, okay. Okay. I have about six Guilty Gear games, but this is my second Guilty Gear game that I really jumped into. Got into, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and you cannot play this. You cannot play any of the Guilty Gear games like a Street Fighter game because it won't work. You'll get your ass handed to you. It's a completely different so, system, yeah. Completely different system. Completely different mechanics. And I had sort of my five characters that I loved that I wanted to perfect. Mm-hmm. And just that art style and the mechanics and, and learning mechanics. And I know about the story, but the story, funny enough, the story did nothing for me because I know nothing about this this universe. Uh huh. It was all about the art style and the gameplay for me. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I mean it's it's beautiful. Like it it's a three D game that looks like a two D anime. Right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 not not entirely cell shaded, but it 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 does have like a look that, I mean, it looks like a beautiful anime. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, they do such Definitely a good job of it. One of the best polished fighting games I've ever played in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So, what's your next pick? Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. It's it, it's been You're doing it. You're doing the it. First time. It's the first time I think that we've nominated. For game of the year, even even like game of the half year, where there's like not a lot of games that are, that are come out, and you kind of well, you know, it's not a lot of games. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna choose this game, this 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 particular genre uh, game. I don't think we've ever done a racing game, and I'm putting up Forza Horizon Five because it is amazing. Wow, wow. Uh, it's not a racing yeah. game; it's a driving game, like Dan it's likes to always game. say. Because you get yeah. you get a beautiful slice of Mexico to ride around in. And it's free roaming, right? There's some, there is a, there is a story, you know. There is a big competition that you have to compete in. Uh, well, you don't have to necessarily, but you can, and you can kind of progress the story and open up extra stuff and all that. Or you can just, you can just go off road and ride the countryside and fly over uh, hilltops and mountains and go up to the volcano and and fly off. I mean, it's it's amazing. You can buy property That's in the game. What I do. That's <sighs> what I do. Mm-hmm. So much fun. So much fun. And. And not to mention, they brought it back from uh, Horizon 4, and I think it was also in 3, but the uh, the Warthog from Halo is in mm. the game as a drivable vehicle from AMG, uh, American Motor Generals or something like that, American Motorsport General. I just want to say, Forza, all Forza games, Horizon and Motorsport, should have a Warthog in the game. <laughs> it should. It should, it should yeah. automatic. It should it's just be so automatic. It's good. And they, they had it in 4. I haven't gotten the Warthog yet, but they had a mission in 4 where you rode down the uh, the kind of um, the coast 
and they okay. were they were like playing the Halo music, right? They they were playing the Master Chief theme, and I think they even had little like jackals pop up around the sides, and they put like the little uh, Covenant bunkers up. Oh, it was so good! Nice, it's so good. Okay, I love it. It is a drive. It is a driving game, and mm-hmm. I I think so. You, this is the first time you've nominated a a, a, a racing slash driving game. Right, right. And Guilty Guilty Gear. I think is the first time we nominated a fighting game. I can't remember. I think what about think what about uh, Dragon game. Ball? I feel like we I put Dragon know. Ball. Up. I I don't know. We would have to check. We would have to check the records. I don't okay. know if we put that okay. in the uh, game of the year. Mm-hmm. So it, this could be historic nominees, right? Mm-hmm. The first fighting, potentially first fighting, and first driving first slash racing game. And yeah, I agree. I thought. Forza Horizon Five was fantastic. I mm-hmm. played the I played the hell out of it, and I think I did like two races and mostly just drove around the coast of Mexico. Yeah, yeah, and you get just as much enjoyment from yeah. that as doing the story missions because it's yeah. just yeah, oh, so good. Okay, so what's your uh, next game, Dan? So my next game is Life is Strange: True Colors. Nice. This game. I got to say was fantastic on the Dave scale. It was mm-hmm. phenomenal on the Dan scale. I loved it. It was mm-hmm. not as good. I think emotionally it wasn't as good as the first one. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to speak for you, but I'm going to, you know, for me, I was a nerd growing up. Yeah. So the first one hit me emotionally growing up as the nerd, as the outsider mm-hmm. in school. Right. Cause you're still in school. You're in college. Yep. Uh, in the first one. So being the outside of the nerd, that hit me emotionally. The second one didn't hit me at all emotionally, mm-hmm. right? Um, the story didn't capture me at all either. Mm-hmm. But True true Colors, the third one, really got me. Like, mm. so the story was phenomenal. And, like, another game that we may or may not talk about on this mm-hmm. list, it had different elements of other games in it, right? Like you got to play as an RPG in this game. Oh, yeah. This game okay. had this game like it, I know I know these these are sort of point and click story style games, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, The Walking Dead, Life is Strange 1, or the original Life is Strange and Life is Strange 2 Colors are the best sort of style game of these style games I've ever played in my life. And the story really hit me. I really like the story, mm-hmm. and I just love that they mixed up some of the gameplay in different chapters, right? With the, especially with the RPG, like right. that, I thought that was phenomenal. There was a right, chapter right. where you just you're doing half of the half of the chapter was RPG ish. Mm-hmm. So, I recommend you play this game. I don't know if you played the first Life is Strange game. I have it, and before I know you have it. Yeah. I know you have it. I know you have it. You've been you've been telling so, me ever since we started the podcast you got to play this game, and I keep saying I'm going to get to it, Dan. And I, I Dave, still love you have to get Dave, to it. We're taking we're taking a break. We're taking a we're taking a few week break. There we go. Weeks off. There we go. You got to play. I know you don't have this game, but at least play the first game because I know you. you well, know, you were you know you grew up a nerd. You grew up yeah. a nerd. I'm not going to um, speak for you, but you say you were a nerd in school. A little bit of an outsider. Mm-hmm. I think. From an emotional, you know, that emotional standpoint, that will hit you as it hit me, hopefully, right? But play this third game before you play the second game, because I think the second game isn't as good story wise. But does it game. does does part three reference part two at all? You don't need to play any of the games. Dude. They're all self contained. Okay, they're all self contained. Okay, correct. Gotcha. I, I I believe I read somewhere, and I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. But I think I read somewhere that there's something that connects the universes. Okay. Right? And I kind of I could have missed it, right? Because I'm so focused on like the current story as it's being told that I right, probably right. missed the little nuance that connects the worlds. Mm-hmm. But in all three stories, whatever uh, the whatever the protagonist is, you have a superpower for some reason, mm-hmm. right? That's unexplained. So take that. Which I'm trying not to spoil it because I don't want to spoil it for you because I think the story is that good. I know you know you're dancing oh. around things that you want to say. I'm you know? dancing. I'm, I'm glad dancing. You're not. It's not. I'm it's doing... not. It's not for me, Dan. It's for the fans. Right? You don't want to spoil it for the fans. I'll be okay. okay. I'll be okay. So you'll all be, right, 
You'll be okay. You'll be okay. All right. Okay. All right. Kratos is Kratos is in the game. He's in the game. We, oh, he's, imagine. He's he's in the game. Master Chief awesome. is in the game too. Master awesome. Chief is in the game too. Nice. But I would recommend you play Life is Strange the first one, mm-hmm. and then Life is Strange True Colors. Okay. So come on, when we come back from episode three hundred, you got to play Life is Strange. Come on, come on, Dave. Come on. I'll see Find what I can time. do, Dan. Find I'll see what time. I can do. All right. So Dave, so, what's your next nominee? Ooh. Brand new game. Uh, one of the casualties of 2020 was supposed to come out in 2020. Ended up getting pushed till 2021. For holiday season. That's right. That's right. And that game is Deathloop, baby. Love it. Love it's it. It's kind of weird to say an Xbox first party game that's a PlayStation exclusive. For the moment. It'll be coming to Xbox next year. But we yeah, believe. they bought uh, they so. bought they bought Arcane Studios, right? That that was the studio. Well, that the, Arcane is a part of uh, Bethesda, you know, yeah. Zenimax, Zenimax. Well, right. Zenimax at the top of the chain, right? Uh, you know, Bethesda. Zenimax. Te- technically, Zenimax owns Arcane, Bethesda, and, right? You no, know, all right. the studios so, going down. So. This game was in production before. All, all the talks went down. They they agreed. Okay, we're gonna put the game out. It's gonna be PlayStation exclusive for a timed exclusive. Now, eventually coming to Xbox. Game is amazing. If you own a PS5, do yourself a favor, pick this game up because they kept showing it and it kept like everyone kept saying this game looks really cool. It's got a 1970s aesthetic and it's a uh, it's a live die repeat situation right it's just like that it's just like that tom cruise movie that should have been called live die repeat because that makes it so much better not whatever the stupid title is but the one where he keeps dying over and over again until he gets the sequence right that is this game except except your character has amnesia which is even better so you wake up there's no idea you wake up on a beach you don't know what's going on you're like my head hurts and you kind of go through and you you know you start figuring out some stuff and and you meet your uh, you meet your antagonist, you meet the villain of the story, and you're oh, okay, and you get a little bit. You still don't know what's going on, and then you die. And you come back to life, and you're like, what happened? And you realize you're in this game loop. And you basically, the whole crux of the game, you got to figure out the most optimal way to take out these, I think, six or seven high-value targets before the day ends. And well, just... just- Edge of Tomorrow is the name of the movie. For Edge now. of Tomorrow. It should have been called Live, Die, Repeat. What the hell is Edge of Tomorrow? It's stupid. You're on the edge of tomorrow. You're uh-huh. trying to get to tomorrow. You're on the edge, and you don't get to tomorrow. It's still I today. mean, yeah, it's right there at the edge. Now, Live, Die, Repeat, much better. But Deathloop, an even better name. Fantastic game. Uh, African-American protagonist, which I think is great. Uh, we don't get to see a lot of that in video games, so good to see representation. And the voice actors, Amazing. Top notch. Well, love it. Well, African American protagonist and sort of female, who so happens to be an African American female yep. protagonist. Yep. 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 Or well, antagonist. Yeah, yep. antagonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 great. I have yet to meet the other characters in the game. I'm sure they're just as diverse, uh, but that's that's kind of really good to see. And it's all wrapped up in an amazing video game. I know. Some people on this podcast may not be too crazy about the gimmick of the game, but. It's very good. It's very good. I listen. I played the first two missions, right? Mm-hmm. Like I beat the, I, I killed the first two bosses in the mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, not you really. You could play the game any way you want, mm-hmm. but I, I feel the game was meant to be more of a stealth style game. You do want to not alert the guards, yeah. Yeah, run and gun is not the best uh, optimal strategy. It's not the usually. best option, but that's not the that's not the style of gameplay I like to play. I mean, you can do it, but it, it makes it a little bit tougher because they're all coming at you, you know. Well, you know, I like I like to make things tough on myself. I like to make things <laughs> you do. easy. So, uh. Uh, all right. Speaking of that, my nomination mm-hmm. goes to Halo Infinite. Of course, I, of it course. goes to Halo Infinite. I think Halo Infinite is a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. I have my gripes. I do have my gripes. We like can, we we have gripes. Yeah, you cannot you can you cannot uh, sort of <laughs> zoom in on the map, right? Like that's that's not as not as huge, not as far as you would want. That's a huge to. gripe for 
that's a huge huge gripe for me because sometimes you know i want to go to this area and i'm like it's right there and it doesn't I can't see that it's a mountain. I gotta climb a mountain. I gotta mm-hmm. repel. I gotta go up a mountain. It's like grapple up a mountain. This is yep. ridiculous. Yeah, hard to um, tell which objectives you've done and not done. It's, uh, yes. it's a pretty bad UI, to be honest. Uh, but I mean, all that kind of being said, all the multiplayer issues aside and all that, single player campaign. I mean, they really they took Halo and they turned it into an open world game, but it's still Halo. Semi-open. Semi-open semi world, world in the middle of the game. So the mm-hmm. beginning of the game is more linear, and the end of the game is more linear. But the middle of the game is right. more open, like you a can far do what you want. You got to liberate outpost mm-hmm. style, which I'm not that crazy about, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But I will say, and you know, I will say this: every time you, uh, you know, you you liberate an outpost that's sort of directed to the storyline of the game, the next outpost next to it is something that will connect to the storyline. So it's not like you free this outpost and that's the storyline. You got to go all the way over here Mm -hmm. for the next storyline. It's like, it's right next to it. So if you want, you can play it sort of linearly and that's what I do. Yep. Yep. So, uh, the more I, I wouldn't say this, the more I play, the more I love this game. I gave it a nine. Mm Mm-hmm. On our, uh, you know, episode 298, if you want to hear mm-hmm. all of my thoughts about Halo, or all our thoughts about Halo, yeah, uh, you know, go back to listen to, two, to uh, 298, mm-hmm. episode 298, but I still stand by the nine. I thought maybe I would I would downgrade it a little bit to eight and a half, right. but I'm still, I'm still at a nine. Still I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and revise my score right now and bump it up to a nine. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm still wow. loving it. I was playing it all day today and yesterday and and uh yeah it's it's only gotten better i i thought i would get bored of it and whatnot but and i'm i'm going for that 100 percent, dan i'm clearing the island everything i don't know if you'll i don't know everything. if you'll get it though I don't know i'm if gonna you'll get it. well i already i already met there's a couple of things that during like the the missions quote unquote there's some stuff that i missed already even though i got the two skulls but I, I missed some of the audio logs. So when I when I when I beat it, I need to go back and do cleanup. But it's only going to be a few things. I'm gonna get there. Okay. I'm gonna get there. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, I, I've already I'm on cranking out the achievements. I mean, oh. So what? With, with that said, mm-hmm. Dave, what's what's your your next nominee? My number two is uh, in the same vein as Deathloop. Funny enough, similar, very very similar game mechanic. You uh, love Returnal. these game styles. You love these right. game styles. All right. PS5 exclusive, and it will stay that way because Sony bought this company. They own, uh, what's the name? Uh, Housemark. Housemark. They own Housemark Studios now, which is an amazing purchase. They make amazing games. And uh, Returnal's great. It is a um, <clears throat> it is a it is a live, die, repeat situation uh, where they unveil the story little by little. So you get little... <clears throat> you get little like uh, story tidbits every time you die and you come back. You get little flashes of like kind of what happened to you, like how you crash landed on this on this uh, planet, which is I think awesome. And as you go through, um, you start uncovering like more of the story as you're trying to like get through and beat the game. And uh, that is amazing. It's a solid shooter at its core. Um, I like that the more you go through the game, the more things you unlock that you can get in subsequent runs. And, uh, I mean, it's beautiful. The game is beautiful. The, 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 the sound design in that game is amazing. They make very good use of the dual sense controller down to the vibrations. And they use that speaker like it's part of your sound system, right? There's all these little beeps and whatever. And it, it lets you know, it lets you know when you're, when you're like special weapon ability is recharged, you'll hear the controller, like, like making like a whining noise, like it's ready to go. And then it, and then you're like, all right, let's go. Special weapon, ready to go. Boom. Love will, it. Uh, love this game. I will say, I hate roguelikes. I love yeah. hard smart games. Mm-hmm. In general, even though they're really they're really tough, right? Like Rezo Gun was really tough. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think of the game. What was the other game that came out for the PS4 mm-hmm. in the same in the same vein, the same style, sort of 
2D play, 2D platformer. That was really tough too. Um, I can't think of the name. Uh, it's right there on the tip of my tongue, but I can't think of the name. But it that was really Next tough. Next Machina was that the one? Yes, yes. Next, Next Machina, Machina. Mm-hmm. another tough game. Um, I I love I love sort of the mechanics, the art style. I just don't like the roguelike. That's yeah, why I, that I tap out when it comes to that. Like I love the story. The story mm-hmm. is super interesting. But because the game is so hard and it's a rogue is a rogue where you you can't memorize the pattern. It's going to be it's totally different when you get you know when you die and go back. Everything's going to be different to a, to a that's, degree. That's not to a degree. That's not something that I'm not you get super interested in. Okay, I I will say this like and I put a lot of time into that game. Uh, I may be very poor at the game. I don't know. I think I think I think I should what be level further are you along. On? What level are you on? Well, I I've gotten to the the boss of the third area. So I've okay. gotten that far. And the cool thing about it is when I got you get to the second area and that's it. Okay. okay make past the second area. Well, when you when you get to the second area, you now are able to basically fast travel to the second area. Once you see where the portal is to get there, you can go right there. And the same with the third area, right? You get a thing, you get a basically a grappling hook that allows you to get to the third area. So you don't have to go through area 1 to beat the boss to get the key to open up area two to beat the boss to go to, you can just shortcut it. And, and when you get to area two or area three, there's always a chest that kind of gets you up to speed, right? Cause there's like your, your, your weapon prof- proficiency level. And okay. the more you go along in the game, the better the weapons you get. Cause you keep like kind of earning this uh, quote unquote experience uh, as you're like going along. So you you can get up to like level nine or ten when when you get to area three you don't have to do level one and two again, and also like a lot of the uh, well all of the uh, the layouts of the rooms, there's only so many layout room type layouts. Now the way they link together is you may get room type A and then room type H and then room type D and then C B, and the next time you may start off with B and then F and then Q, but when you walk into the room, you recognize the room and you go, oh, I know exactly how this room is laid out. And I know a general idea of where they would place the power ups. So you can start mm-hmm. zooming through the levels like, you know, I can get through all the area one stuff like nobody's business because I played it so much. But uh, that yeah. comes with time. I know you okay. got to live, die, repeat. So, yeah, I spent I don't know how many hours, but I spent a lot of time in that game. So. All right. I love it. So what's your uh what's your what's your number two, Dan? Getting down to the wire here. My number two pick will be a game that I didn't really think anything of at, at first, but mm-hmm. it is a fantastic game and has and, and by the way, all these games are fantastic. They're on the list because they're fantastic. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. On the Dave scale or phenomenal on the Dan scale. Oh, I know shit. we haven't talked about the Dan scale. But you know, I, this is the first Dave I've heard fantastic. of it. If Dave, if Dave has fantastic, I have phenomenal. Okay. Okay. And that is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Nice. Good it game. Is, it is phenomenal. It's a, great, the, uh, it's a great game. One of the only games on this list I haven't played. It is a great game. I mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the story, right? Because mm-hmm. you have like the female Ratchet style, right? Rivet. Yeah. Um, Rivet, I forgot her name. It's been so. It's been like eight months, six months, six mm-hmm. seven months. I've played the game. I mean, it was like in early June. Uh, I, I really like how they tied her in and who she is, and 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 like her emotional part with like another character in the game that I won't mention because I'm trying not mm-hmm. to spoil it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the fact that you could go through the different time loops, right? Like the different, uh, you're going through the portal here for this dimension and this dimension. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought this the story wise was great, mechanics were great. Any type of ratchet and clank game, you're gonna have like fifty different type of weapon types, right? If you could get enough, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, spark it sparks or whatever. Um, I just thought this was one of the best games, best ratchet and clank, ratchet and clank games ever made. Mm-hmm. Nice. So, and that's a high praise because the first one was really good too. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. first three were really good. Yeah, way well, so, way back of the PS2, sure. Yeah. So I really enjoyed this game. And this was a showcase of what the PS5 could do, right? Like this was a big showcase of what the PS5 yeah. could do. This is what this was the first, I think, 
PS5 ex- actual exclusive games that came out. Yeah. Uh, in 2021, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. everything could be, every game that came out prior to this could be, they had a PS4 version. Right. This or was it was only... multi platform, yeah. Yeah. So uh, this game was phenomenal. So I really like this game. This game was fantastic. I like the art style, the story, mm-hmm. the mechanics, and it had a million and one different, you know, blockbuster weapon types. So. Yeah, there was a lot in that game, apparently. Yeah. So before and we that's get what into it's kind of it, known for, right? It's known for the wacky, is. the big wacky weapon arsenal. It is. It is. It is still a collectathon, and mm-hmm. it's worth it if you do because you can get the high power weapons. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, before we get into our last nominees, the last two nominees, let's talk about sort of honorable mentions or mm-hmm. runner ups. Mm-hmm. Dave, give me, give me your runner up, or your. So a game that didn't break your top five, but an honorable mention here because it deserves to be an honorable mention. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is the fifth entry in the 2D saga of the Metroid franchise. That is Metroid mm. Dread. And now, now I'm going to preface this. I love this game, but the you reason do. it's not the reason it's not in the uh, the top five for me. It's because it lacked a story. And okay. if you're going to tie all these things together, and they do get tied together, they, it, it does have a narrative that kind of follows up, but it's all just environmental storytelling for the most part. But And there's like a couple of cutscenes that kind of... There's really three cutscenes at the beginning, the middle, and the end. And that's really about it. I wish they had more of a story. I wish they kind of explained a little bit more. Or, or, or like environmentally told you like, oh, this is how this came to be. This is how this, you know, area came about. This is why this character is in the game. Like, you just don't know. You're like, you're just on this thing. Here's the villain. I'm going to go kill this villain. Uh, gameplay was super tight. Don't get me wrong. It was amazing. I love the new power-ups and all that. But it was lacking a strong narrative. But that's kind of Nintendo's jam. But, yeah. So that's why that's why it doesn't make... That's why that's why I didn't make the number uh the the uh the, the top the, five. Uh, your top, the top five. five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's almost though. Very, very close. Very close. I would I would say my runner up, right? Uh, our honorable mention would go to Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. This game actually surprised me. Mm-hmm. I didn't think this game would be as good as it is. I love this game. I beat this game. But I earned everything in the game, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Like, I think this game lasted, I think this game narratively, it won Best Narrative Game mm-hmm. for the Game Awards, and I thought the narrative mm-hmm. was, was phenomenal. But it lasted too long. Two hours too long, right? Like, it was just too long. It, it had too much goodness mm-hmm. in it. Sometimes you can have too much goodness. Sometimes you need to scale it back just a little sure. bit. Sure. Right? Uh, I, I found myself when I was playing this game, like, oh my God, we're not done yet. <laughs> we're not done yet. Like I really wanted to be done with this game. Right. At right. some point. I think, I think I get what long. you're saying. Yeah. I think I get what you're saying. I like, you the part want a nice tight end, narrative, right? I, I, I get the part where the end, it wasn't really the end. Mm-hmm. And then we got, and then it was like more, it was a more on top of mm-hmm. more stuff that was mm-hmm. like, oh my God, is that ending yet? <laughs> I still got another two hours or an hour right. to play right, because right. it had a false ending. It had two false endings. I will Jesus. say that. at two Spoilers. false endings. Spoilers. Um, I mean, you can end it technically. Oh, technically, okay. You have an option to like, yeah. If you want it, if you want. If so that's, that's on you, Dan. You that's want. on you. You, you, you extended the game because you made the wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> it, come on! They gave you player answer. agency, and you chose the wrong answer. You said no. Come on! I need, I need come more. On. I need more guardians. Come on! Come on! Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Because I want to know how it really ends, not the uh-huh. two false endings that you <laughs> could end the game with. Technically, right. if you right. wanted to, you could say this is my ending. And I don't care, mm-hmm. and walk away. But I said no. This, this is you know, this. That's a, that's impossible. That's it can't end like this, mm-hmm. right? And I, it, it had again like Fallout, uh, and I always go to always go to Fallout because people act like Fallout is this game that's the most phenomenal, fantastic. It is. Scale it is game where this game where, well, one where Fallout two, yeah. Four, Fallout mm-hmm. Four had plenty of bugs, 
plenty of bugs. Oh, yeah. No, no. Fallout 4 had, had a lot of issues. Yeah, yeah. Fallout 4 had Assassin's Creed issues. I, okay. It sure did. It sure did. And people and people put this game on a pedestal like it's the like no like mm-hmm. you and and we talked about it when we first started the show. I think that's one of the game one of the games that like really we took and we criticized <laughs> gaming media. Yep. Because remember, I think uh, it was uh, not giant giant bomb criticized the game, mm-hmm. and I think uh, Red Rooster. Uh, oh man. Oh, Rooster, Rooster Teeth. Rooster, Rooster Teeth. Yep. Red Rooster. I knew it was the Rooster. I haven't, yeah. I haven't watched them in a while. That, you know, that, that was a, a story from like 2016, 2017. Yeah, yeah. Ago. They had Pit Boys. They had Pit Boys in their arm because they obviously were sponsored. Yeah, by the special edition Pit the, Boys out there. Is a, hey, this game yeah. is great. We love this, this game. Like, is, there's no issues with this game come whatsoever. On. What What is Jeff Keighley? You know, what that Jeff Keighley? Uh, uh, Gertzman. What is yeah, Gertzman Jeff talking Jeff. about? Uh, right. He's just and being like, critical about it, and he had good. He had a he had a good take on it, right? He wasn't wrong, and he backed it up. You know, you can be critical with something, but you know, as long as you're honest about it, and you have yeah. evidence to back it up, and he did. And it's yeah. like, look, here's yeah. all the so, problems with this game. So I'll uh, tell you, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. I had to restart like three times because mm-hmm. I got stuck somewhere because it was a glitch in the uh, game, mm-hmm. little glitch in the game. Mm-hmm. And I gotta be honest, the glitches in the game is what put me over where I didn't make my top five. So. It was number six on the list of my okay. top, my personal top ten. Fair enough. Fair so, enough. Dave, we've kept people in suspense long enough. Mm-hmm. What is your last nomination? Number one. Now, it's fair to mention, too, that these are in no no particular order. These are just our five. All right? These are our top five. Uh, but the final nominee on my list is Numero the... Uno. Hmm? Numero uno. Numero uno is the Joseph Ferris wow. new classic, okay. It Takes Two. All right. In the vein of Brothers and A Way Out, and now It Takes Two. Um, yeah. I mean, we we uh, we talked about it on the show. We played this game to completion in co-op mode. And, it surprised me, too. I think right? it was a surprising year. Yeah. Right? I didn't think it was going to be. I thought it was going to be fun. It was going to be like A Way Out, which we also played together. We had a fun time with. But this was even better. I mean, they, they kept switching it up on the different, uh, like, every every stage was a new ability and a new type of game. And, you know, they had they had Street Fighter. You could you could do Street Fighter. It was a Street Fighter fighting game in there. There was, like, where you would, you know, there were, there were uh, like, dog RPG. fights. There, RPG? There was an RPG element. You, you, could, you could do dog fighting. Um, and, like, every, like, level, would you get a new ability? You know, you get a nail gun or a stapler or, like, a, well, well, like a honey well, goo gun. I know, but for you, it was funny because, like, for you, it was, like, Street Fighter, right? Because you, yeah. you had the fighting portion. That's right. I had to, fly, right. to, I had to fly the plane. Like, mm-hmm. I was, like... <laughs> and I was fighting on I, the back of it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you can so even I, do, like, Hadoukens and Fireballs, too. Like, they really, like, I know. went the extra mile. But I, but I, but for you, it was a fighting game. For mm-hmm. me, it was a flight simulator because I had right? to actually fly the plane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had to actually fly the plane. It was like, and I hate flight simulator games. So I was like, I was like Tom Clancy's Hawk. Like I'm like, oh <laughs> wow. Flying. Yep. Yep. Oh, and, yeah. and you're and you're like, keep it straight, keep it straight. I got. That's I gotta... right. I'm trying to do fireballs <laughs> over here, and they're going all over the place. You got to keep that thing nice and level. Uh, yeah, so that was I awesome. Was, yeah, that was the game was awesome, and it had rupees like like Zelda. In That's one of right. The, in one That's of the right. chapters, we were yeah. breaking all the pots. I'm like, I wonder if, and yep, lo and behold, there was a room with a bunch of with with a bunch of pots you could break. Uh, not to mention, like the story, super tight. It's all about a uh, family who's teamwork. getting divorced. Teamwork, though, we had to have teamwork to beat the game. Teamwork, teamwork, teamwork so is what the whole game it, is about. We need it. We need it. We need it. Chemistry. We need it. Chemistry. Right. You had to. You have to repair your marriage. That's the whole entire game, and you do it. Well, I'm not going to tell you how it all like goes down, but you have to work together in cooperation to beat the game. And uh, we're, we're we're a great married couple, Dave. That, I know. We're, mar- we're I know. a great married. We 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 great married couple. That's, we work. That's, we work. We work well together. That's it. So yeah. that's my that's my that's my last game. What is your what is your what is your numero uno? What's your what's your last pick? If you would ask me at the start of the year, would you would you think this game would break your top? Mm-hmm. You know, games of the year. I would have mm-hmm. said, no way, no mm-hmm. way, no way, no hell no, no way. But it surprised me. 
again, this was a year if I had to categorize if I had to like put a capsule in this year, one right. word, surprise. I mm-hmm. was surprised this year. It takes two surprise me. Deathloop surprised me. Her Forza Horizon Five surprised me. Yeah, right. Ratchet yeah. and Clank surprised me. Guilty Gear surprised me. A lot of surprises and, this year. And Psychonauts Two surprised oh. me. Yep. The game that my went pick, through development hell in a way. In a way. My pick will be Psychonauts Two, the the Xbox version, not the PS4 version, because the PS4 version was. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta put, you have to put the best one up, right? You gotta put. The you gotta best put one the up. best one up. Mm-hmm. This game, from a visual standpoint, mm-hmm. was phenomenal. Uh, from a story standpoint, surprised the hell out of me. Like the story mm-hmm. was so engaging, and it kept giving me. Every time I went here, it took me here, right? Like the loops and the like. It's just the the curveballs it hit me with, mm-hmm. and the gameplay, right? Like I played Psychonauts one. I have it on the original Xbox, and I thought it was cool. And I have mm-hmm. the remake on uh, the PS4 that was that came out for a limited run, and I have the VR version for the PSVR, right? The Rumpus Room something. The Rumpus are ruined. Close yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was close. I was yeah, close. Yeah. Right, which was sort of like uh, you know, it tells you the story after the original one, right? Right, kind of, kind of links one and two together, yeah. And then, and then the second one came out. I was totally blown away mm-hmm. by every element of this game, and I really fell in love with this game. And I was so happy that you got a chance to play it because you have Games mm-hmm. Pass too. Oh, uh, Phil Spencer, if you're listening, physical copy, please, because yes. I love this game so much. Yes. It's a physical. They own, they own, they own a double fine now, and you have tons of money. Listen, you just yes. point, you just bought Bethesda for seven point five billion. Just produce some physical copies. Come on now. Yeah, listen, listen, easy listen to Dan bucks. here. Easy sixty bucks. Take That's my right. money. I want to give you my right. money. I'm giving you sixty dollars. Just take it. I, I, want, mm-hmm. I want a physical, please. Uh, I think, I think this was, you know, and uh, you can see where the Xbox money <laughs> polished this game a lot. Right? Oh yeah. Well, they well they Again. said they said they said point blank when they when they like bought them out, they said take as long as you need, unlimited funds. Just when you're when you're ready to put this game out, we'll put this game out. So again, story, visuals, sound, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm gonna double dip here. Story again, the swerve at the end. Sure, phenomenal. Sure, love this game. Yeah, I I, I agree with every sentiment, hundred percent. Uh, solid game, solid pick, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's our, that's our, uh, that's our uh, ten, five and five. Yep. Yeah. Well, to recap, we got uh, Resident Evil Village, mm-hmm. Guilty Gear Strive, Her- Forza Horizon Five, right? Mm-hmm. Life is Strange, True Colors, Death Loop, uh, Halo Infinite, Returnal, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, uh, Psychonauts Two, and It Takes Two. Mm-hmm. It's a strong so, list, man. It's a good year for video games. I, I was a good year I was very games. I was very happy very happy to close out twenty twenty one. Lots of good stuff. And uh episode- we're not gonna tell you not gonna tell you the winner now. That comes in episode three hundred in the new year, so you guys gotta you guys gotta sit tight for that. But Dave, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this on a side note. You know I love my side notes. I do. Three hundred we will reveal rated G's game of the year. Mm-hmm. But Dave, you individually, mm-hmm. personally, what was your, I want to say, most enjoyable game of the year? Most enjoyable? That you played. That yeah. came out what this year you, or that I played this that year? Came out, that, that you played this year. That you played this year. Because I played a lot of games. You uh-huh. played a lot of games. Uh-huh. Well, at least I, I know I played, I played, I played a lot of games this year. Mm-hmm. I played... I mean, listen, uh, this is the first time I ever played Mass Effect, mm-hmm. right? This year for mm-hmm. Mass Effect the trilogy, right? Mm-hmm. I gave it a, I gave it the good college master's try. Uh-huh. And I just got stuck somewhere where I'm like, I just- It's a I'm lot. Not, it's a lot. It's a lot. There's a lot I'm going not, on that I, game. I'm not, a, I, I don't see, I don't see what people <laughs> love about this game. Oh my god! Right? Like, I, I don't see be it. Be careful like, with those words, then you may get the uh, Mass Effect community to come after you. I don't, I don't see it. It's it's it was my Bioshock of 2019, right? When we were going to work, and I played Bioshock Infinite 
on mm-hmm. the on the bus on the train coming home, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, okay, I'm playing a lot of this game traveling, and I see why people love it, uh, Bioshock, right? Mm-hmm. Mass Effect. I play Mass Effect, the first one, the second one. Eh, it's okay. I don't uh-huh. see why people love Mass Effect as much as they do. That's so that's your one. best gaming experience of the year. No, Ratchet and Clank is my best gaming experience. Okay, yeah, I would say. Okay. I would say Ratchet Clank, Ratchet and Clank would get would get my most enjoyable game award if I had okay. to that one. I mean, it's I, a, it's, I gotta... a, it's it's a it's a Dan Robinson classic. Okay, okay, it's a classic official official classic. I yeah. I would say that uh, I I love I love the grapple shot in Halo Infinite. It adds a whole other level to that game because now you can go flying around. And climb mountains and go anywhere. Like you can literally go anywhere in that game. You can breath um, of the wild it in, in Halo. Yeah, yeah. And and I haven't been able to do it just yet, but there are ways to propel a vehicle and then you can uh-huh. grapple onto the vehicle and just fly for like most of the the game world. So there's like wow. I, I wouldn't okay. call it a bug, but there's like there's like a like a physics quirk in the game where you can like okay hit it with like uh like a I guess a sh- like a plasma charge or a shock charge or whatever and then when the vehicle starts flying away immediately do the grapple and then you'll just get on the vehicle and then you can launch off of it and just keep going and I've watched tons of videos of people online doing that and it's it is it is it is very much breath of the wild style right you can just go and do what you want you want to climb this mountain you can do this you want to you want to fly out of this vehicle and like land on an enemy encampment? Like you can do that, right? You want to hijack a ghost and and fly around? You can do that. Like they just open world, love it. So yeah, I'd have to say Halo. And it, it, big surprise because I wasn't sure how well the open world was going to work out. I think they did a pretty damn good job of that. They made it fun, and it's not it's not Assassin's Creed level style of map markers. That are just like, I can't. There's just way too many. I can't. There's just enough, I think. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what are you going to do over the little break that we have? The little oh. holiday break? I'm, uh, well, I'm going to, going to try and get to Life is Strange. But I'm going to, uh, I'm going to finish. You have to, you have to play Life is Strange. I'm I know. Telling you, man. I know. You've been telling me since, since we started the podcast, you got to play this game. So yes. I think I think I think I owe it to you and myself to play this game. So I'm gonna do that, uh, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my quest to 100% Halo Infinite single player. It's gonna happen. Wow. It's gonna I don't happen. Know. I don't know about that. There's a lot. I, I can it's imagine there's a lot in Halo single player. I don't know. Yeah, the only thing that I'm worried about is beating it on legendary. Because I've gotten most, I'd say 70 to 80 percent of the stuff that you have to pick up in the game to complete it. Uh, okay. I've done all the high value targets, gotten all the Spartan cores, I got all the uh, the armor upgrade. I got all the upgrades. I got all the um, all the special armor colors and multiplayer stuff. And now I'm just picking okay. up all the audio logs from all the different people. And then I just got to beat it. And then I got to go back and pick up the ones I missed and beat it on legendary. And I think that's it. I think that's okay. it. There, there actually, well, there, there actually may be one more achievement, which I'm fearing, which is the lasso achievement, which they've had since Halo th- two or three, which is legendary all skulls. Um, I forget what the O is, but you beat the game on legendary with all the skull modifiers, which basically they, they turn off the uh, the HUD. Um, I think they reduce your shields. There's so many other things. There's like fog of war, whatever else. They make it it make it very tough. And okay. with legendary, I don't know how the I don't know how it works in the new one, but in the old one, I I don't think you can ever die. If you turn on all the skulls and you go, you have to do it in one shot. I think because if you die, you like it technically sets you back to the beginning of the level instead of the checkpoint. So you got to do the whole thing over again. Um. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. I may I may kind of tap out on that one. So what are you doing this weekend? Or for the break, I guess, because we're going to be out for a little bit. I'm going to play a lot of the games that are nominated for uh, Game of the Year. Like, I'm going to play more Guilty Gear. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to play some Resident Evil. I'm going to try to get into Deathloop and, and Returnal. All right. Um, 
and maybe you know finish Halo Infinite. Right, story wise, I'm like I feel like I'm halfway there, right? mm-hmm. no more than halfway there. Um, but I want to finish Halo Infinite and uh, just jump into Forza and just drive, right? Because oh. it's just driving. It's just driving mm-hmm. game. That's it's right. Game. That's right. You can go and where then, you want. And then, and then play more if I was surprised Saturday morning retro game. Which oh, if you you know, well that too. I gotta I gotta get in on my Saturday morning retro game too. I'm very excited yes. for that. Mm-hmm. Yes, catch, catch, catch Saturday, the first Saturday morning, the Saturday morning next, well, the next Saturday morning retro show All right. in uh, last January. Last Saturday of every month? Mm-hmm. Last Saturday mm-hmm. of every month. So that's all I got. That's all I got that's for it. you. All right, folks, that's uh, that's episode 29 in the books. And I uh, want to thank you guys for listening to the show and liking, commenting, and doing all the good stuff that uh, you guys do. And uh, happy holidays to whatever... Every whatever holiday you celebrate, and uh, happy New Year because we're not going to see you till uh, till the next year. So, a little uh, little happy holidays there. And uh, if you want to interact with us, and we know that you do, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Rated G for Gamers. Uh, and also, we are part of the Gaming Podcast Alliance. You can check out all the fine podcasts featured on there at GamingPodcastAlliance.com if you're looking for more gaming goodness so please listen like rate review and subscribe and as always keep gaming